So if it's the case that arbitrary bytes and bits of data can be encoded, decoded as anything that, that is asked for, whether those are ints or floating point numbers or streams of, of characters, how then does the computer know what to cast things as? Because it's not like you're constantly telling it, please put these as uint eights and put these over there as int thirty twos and right, that isn't happening. Well, the simplest example to describe that solves this problem is called the file format. And file formats are basically lookup tables, known ways of describing and organizing data that are agreed upon by different software uh, programmers and companies so that they know how to encode particular pieces of files or the data inside those files so that they can be opened up by arbitrary programs. This is usually just depicted as something that has you know a, a file extension to it so something like you know some file name dot txt for example would be you know a, a label right because the, the files can be anything the type the, the these actual file extensions don't mean anything but that .txt file signals to the user that this file, which is just nothing other than a sequence of, of bytes inside, that this file is probably a text file. And text files have a very simple format. In fact, classical text files, I'm talking old school ASCII text files, are very, very simple. They start and have very, uh, no, a very boring encoding scheme, where the very first byte is meaningful data and every byte after that is also meaningful data and it just is characters. There's nothing else going on. There's no headers, there's no instructions, there's nothing. There's just a series of one bytes, one after the other until the file is over and there's no more data and you get to what's called the end of the file, EOF, and then it's done. And if you read every single one of these bytes starting at the first one and decode them as a an ASCII uint, uh, an ASCII 8-bit character, then you will be able to read that text file as an actual set of strings that are parsable by someone who presumably wrote some some words and sentences in there. That's the simplest type of file format that exists. Literally something that just has nothing but the pure data. Most things are more complicated than that. You know, most other types of file formats have a fixed structure to them. There's some header information up front that everyone knows how to read, and then maybe there's additional metadata here that tells you what to expect in the sections that follow, and then only later do you actually get the actual data. But it's this header information over here that instructed the program how to decode the data that follows below. This is true for pretty much any type of more complicated file format. If you're talking about JPEG files, or you're talking about MP4 files, or anything that's sizable of any of any serious consequence that isn't just you know a very simple string of text characters, has some type of file format and a header and a container that sort of explains in a standardized fashion that all the programs that, that know how to open up and parse JPEG files or MP4 files know to expect certain types of data at certain locations that then inform where the rest of the data, how the rest of the data is encoded. And that's just how it works, right? These are called, these are called container formats, right? Um, for for files and every single file of consequence has something like this your doc files your your xls files your you know your gif files um, everything everything has a strict format and that's how they get around the encoding problem so there are entire libraries uh, programming libraries dedicated to handling and parsing these types of file formats so that not every program that handles it, say, that is a movie player um, or an image viewer, has to rewrite, you know, and, and 
you know, learn from scratch and, and implement the encoding format here because then you just offload that to a library. You open your file through that library and it gives you the information of interest already parsing through your container information. So that's how, at least when it comes to files on your disk, uh, how the computer knows how to parse them or how the programs that you ask to open a particular file know how to parse and make sense of the data encodings because Again, they can be anything, but it's a relatively simple problem uh, to solve once you understand that really uh, there's just formats of the data that are that are fixed that then inform everything else.